This first lesson is on carbon chemistry, or C1. This is on fractional distillation, and the talent is experimental work. The first objective is to describe how fractions are produced from a distillation column and identify trends in their properties, to explain how fractional distillation separates crude oil into fractions, and to interpret the relationship between the molecular size, chain length, and intermolecular forces. The first part of this lesson is to understand that oil, natural gas, peat and coal are examples of fossil fuels. This means that they are non-renewable energy sources which will run out. This means that they will not, cannot be replaced within our lifetime and that there is a finite amount of resources. It takes millions of years for each of these resources to be made, so we have to think very carefully about how we use them. A key part of your first lesson will be to learn about a fractional distillation column. This is a method of separating all of the fractions or parts of crude oil. In this container we have an example of synthetic crude oil. Within school we can't use real crude oil because it contains molecules which are harmful to us. So we have to design it ourselves. And this one contains four fractions. This demonstration is going to show how these fractions can be separated. In the bottom of the boiling tube we have some mineral wool which has been soaked in our synthetic crude oil mixture. We also have a mercury thermometer to measure the temperature up to 300 degrees. We have a delivery tube from a side arm and also a collecting tube. The distillation has three key steps. Evaporation, condensation and then collection. If you look carefully into this tube, you will see that our first fraction has started to collect. It has been evaporated in the tube, condensing in the delivery tube and then finally being collected. Our first fraction has finished evaporating. At this point, I'm going to stop heating and prepare the second delivery tube for the next fraction. now ready to heat for our second fraction. We are now evaporating our third and final fraction. We've now collected our third fraction, now it's time to test them. This part of the practical shows a very simple test of our three fractions we've just extracted. This was our first one. This had the lowest boiling point and came off first. Let's show you how easy it is to light. And that's very, very quickly and with a bright yellow flame. Our second fraction, in comparison to the clear colour of the first, is a dark yellow colour. Slightly more difficult to light. At this point, start to note that there is a difference in the amount of soot that is coming off from each fraction. Our third and final fraction is a dark orange colour. Much more difficult to light. Again, watch the difference between the amount of soot coming off the third and final fraction. This is because these fractions undergo incomplete combustion, more so than the first fraction. The 
third fraction was the hardest to light, it also burns with the darkest flame. We now need to be able to explain the experiment we've just carried out and understand the trends and patterns of the different fractions. Now by looking at the fractional distillation column, you should see how the hydrocarbon molecules start as small chains coming out at the top of the column and larger chains at the bottom. If you look at the results of the experiment, the fraction that came off first, the clear liquid, that had the lowest boiling point, was least viscous and was the most volatile. Volatile means how easily it turns into a vapour and viscosity is a measure of how thick a liquid is. Our first fraction has the smallest carbon chains. This is an example of two methane molecules, one carbon surrounded by four hydrogens. Inside the molecule, the bond is a covalent bond, so the carbon is bonded to each hydrogen by a strong covalent bond. When the solutions evaporate, these bonds remain intact. What breaks down is the intermolecular forces between the molecules. Inter describing between two molecules, molecular meaning between two molecules rather than between two atoms, and a force representing the attraction between them. If we compare these short chain molecules to longer chain molecules of propane, so three carbons surrounded by eight hydrogens, since the chains are longer, there is now an increase in the intermolecular forces between them, which we can represent here simply by dotted lines. It is the increase in intermolecular force that accounts for the properties we've seen. Because there is a stronger intermolecular force in long chain molecules, this makes them less volatile, which means they are less likely to evaporate. It makes them harder to combust. It also makes them more viscous. Very long chain hydrocarbons, such as bitumen, come out of the bottom of our fractional distillation column and are used for things like tarmac. The very short chain hydrocarbons, for example methane, we often use as burning fuels like we use in our gas taps. How does fractional distillation separate crude oil into fractions? First, the crude oil is heated. This happens at the bottom of the fractionating column. Secondly, the fractionating column has a temperature gradient. It is cold at the top and hot at the bottom. This means that the fractions will condense at their boiling points, meaning that fractions with high boiling points will remain at the bottom. The ones with low boiling points will condense as they go up the column. Fractions containing mixtures of hydrocarbons are obtained. This means that each of the individual fractions won't be 100% pure, and each fraction will then go to a different part of the factory in order to be refined further to separate it into individual groups of molecules. Fractions may contain many substances with similar boiling points. Fractions with low boiling points exit at the top of the column. Examples of these would be refinery gases. Fractions with high boiling points exit at the bottom of the column. This would be a simple explanation of how fractional distillation works, but it is important that you link your ideas together. As part of your extension, it's important to understand the difference between explaining how a fractional distillation column works and explaining exactly why it works. This links back to the difference between the intermolecular forces of the different carbon chains. Each of the hydrocarbon molecules are joined together by covalent bonds. It is the intermolecular forces that hold each of these larger molecules together. When crude oil is boiled, the intermolecular forces are broken, not the covalent bonds. This forms a vapour. The larger the hydrocarbon molecule, the stronger the intermolecular forces, the higher the boiling point is. Small chain hydrocarbons like methane, ethane or propane are gases.
the largest molecules are solids. This is because their boiling point has increased. Hopefully, now you feel confident enough to address our objectives. To describe the fractions produced from distillation, to explain how fractional distillation separates crude oil, and to interpret the relationship between molecular size, chain length, and intermolecular forces. If you don't understand any of these points, look back at the video again or consult with your teacher.